Hello. Uh, good afternoon. I hope you're still awake. <laughs> well, uh, my shelter foundation was uh, um, came out uh, basically because of my experience of coming back from the United States and then getting uh, caught in a storm in Bicol at that time. And uh, the, the windows of the hotels were blown in. The roof was blown out. But really, uh, what made it really terrible is to see the village in front of us uh, really uh, have... Uh, it was wiped out, no? Uh, but one of the things I did notice was the fact that they all run to the classrooms uh, once, the, you know, once they were having difficulties uh, with the strong winds and the rains, they would run to the classrooms. And I started thinking about how classrooms are on the front lines of climate change for the Philippines. And so this is where I put up the My Shelter Foundation and started looking for uh, better ways to rebuild. Because when I walked out to the area, I found out that there were several deaths because one of the classrooms collapsed and people uh, did not have any other place to go. So basically, they were, they were uh, vulnerable. But anyway, so I, was so taken, I was so taken by that that I said, what is the future for a, for a population that is so vulnerable and least able to adapt to this kind of climate changes. And so uh, basically, this was the scenario that we were seeing. Uh, very quickly, you know, uh, we started uh, doing uh, new kinds of technology. So I'm a specialist with bamboo, soil, sand. Uh, we're now building uh, buildings made out of paper uh, for, uh, you know, to be able to rebuild. So, but one of these things I wanted just to talk to you about is uh, we started seeing a lot of waste plastic bottles from uh, uh, shipments no, of, of uh, humanitarian goods. But there was not enough uh, bricks coming in at that time. No? So it would take a little bit, a uh, couple of weeks. Anyway, just uh, thinking about like what's available, how can people rebuild. We started uh, experimenting with uh, river mud. And this river mud, we would cook a little bit of lime. And then we would use chicken feathers to mix with uh, uh, the cement. That way, we didn't have to use a steel bar. And uh, very quickly, in about two weeks, we would be able to build uh, classrooms uh, back. No? So uh, this kind of, uh, you know, uh, if you want to call it natural or urban or uh, recycled, really became very interesting to me because I was always thinking about the fact that uh, when calamity strikes, the people that really rebuild most of the, their, their um, villages and homes uh, really build it themselves. So I was very interested in the fact that, you know, what would it take for communities, let's say, when you, get, you, when you have almost 400,000 houses destroyed in 12, 24 hours, what will that mean in the future when storms become stronger? So that was basically my study. And so, you know, one of the interesting things for us is also, you know, we're, we're buying uh, bamboo, we're, we're creating small bamboo forests where when there's a destruction that happens, we would be able to harvest from that and rebuild houses. So we're always thinking about what kind of, you know, bottom-up approaches, people-centered approaches can happen when storms become bigger. And anyway, one of the things that also concerned me was, in the tent cities, uh, th uh, there would be no light, no? So I wanted to create the cheapest emergency lighting in the world, <laughs> if you want to call it. And so one of the things that we did when we built the plastic bottle schools was really, you know, as I said, you know, we'd have almost a mountain of plastic bottles that were, uh, when people were drinking and then throw it away. But after every five uh, plastic bottles filled with mud, we would put one with water. And this water would bounce on the, on, on the would bounce, uh, you know, it would put it on the ceiling or on the side. And this would bring light inside communities. Usually uh, when, you know, Meralco or telephone, uh, uh, electrical posts collapse, well, collapse. They always, you know, up to now, even in a place where we're so used to electrical wires getting snapped off in an in extreme storm, we still put it back on top, no? So, we're always prone to months without electricity while they put it back up. So it's very interesting for me, like, how do you 
get some kind of energy back on. And one of the things that we do a lot is we create hubs of women groups, uh, not only for the light that on top, but then we teach them how to get copper, uh, copper strips, and then we put pentel pen, we dip it in a, a, small, in a very available acid, and then uh, we work a lot with uh, the, the solar cell manufacturer here uh, to create very cheap, you know, very cheap kind of solar lights. Now, night might not be, uh, you know, the sexiest design, but during the day, the light goes through the bottle, lights up, lights up the house, but during the night, we use, you know, e-cigarette batteries, computer batteries, and lately, we found, uh, you know, a, a, a vast storage where uh, hotels, uh, they throw away their emergency light battery every year. So every year, they get rid of that emergency light battery and then they replace it. So we get about five tons of those batteries, even though it's still very good. So we start working with women's groups uh, to use local PVC. Remember, the, the point is, how do you put solar into, you know, into a local context? Because when you import it from other countries, they do it on purpose to make it fail. So the, well, first of all, 70% of your cost, 60, uh, sorry, 50 to 70% of your cost is just shipping it. So India, China, you put it in a container van, you put it in a box, you ship it. It comes here into the Philippines plus taxes. Where do you think they take out the, the, how do you think they make money? One is they make the batteries cheap. So after about three hours of charging, you only get five hours of light. Second is they make it into micro circuits in the factory so that when it breaks in a year and a half, people have to go again into microcredit to buy it. So just very trying to interest me, like how can I take the technology and spread it around uh, the country? One of the things that we noticed was also that, you know, as we were trying to do PVC, meron palang 35 million lamparas in the Philippines that were being used. So kerosene lamps where you have to expensively have to recharge it. It's dirty, people, you know, it's fire hazard. So what we were trying to do is really convert that into solar. So basically, uh, we take the kerosene lamp, and then uh, what happens? Actually, Ding Dong Dantes just built this in about 15 minutes. And uh, if anybody wants to purchase it, no, no. So we convert it into, we convert it into solar. And this brings livelihood for communities. You don't have to buy it from us. It's really the knowledge uh, that imparts. So what, how is it that we take away the solution that one person or one company will be able to supply you with solar lights and, say, and, and, and move it to every local government can build their own solar lights. Every, every province has its own social entrepreneur or entrepreneur that can build their own street lights, house lights, uh, and of course, study lights. Because if you have to import all the time, you'll notice that your street lights will always break your house lights will always break and you'll always have to buy a new one because business model ni Leon. So one thing in Metro Manila is we like people to get involved. So we've trained more than uh, 10,000 children to build their own solar lights. Uh, and then they donate it to another kid that is uh, within, you know, our, within our partnership, no? mga indigenous community. So we really try to personalize the light uh, that they build and to give it. But even in the community, uh, we also teach them how to make their own solar lights. So uh, I'll play a video. Uh, this is in Tacloban. Uh, and the, the, the scouts were doing an exercise there. And I said, wait, if you give me one hour of your time, I have a thousand lights here that needs to be built. These are scouts of about... Uh, 13, 13 to 15, can you give me 200 scouts and I want them to build 1,000 lights for the residents of Tacloban? And this is, this is a video of what happened. Thank 
clear, clear dishes. Uh, easy clean. So clearly, we, we can teach, we can teach even very young people how to build their own solar lamps. But also in the future, we really want them to uh, be able to make it as their business. But even in disaster, hindi uh, lang old clothes and food. But we really want, uh, we really want here, especially in Manila, if there's a massive earthquake, it's not that you'll be able to go to your 7-Eleven and buy batteries. No, you really have to already start teaching people, especially in a massive disaster, uh, to be able to make their own lights. So we just wanted to show that we get 200 young people who have never built solar lights and within a couple of hours we can do thousands of lights so it, we try to really make the technology very uh, very available so scale is something that uh, we can teach uh, any 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 community how to make but really uh, the thing with this kind of solar lights is you needed something that they can fix so if you look we have different kinds, kahit some of it with the circuit board, some of it walang circuit board, puro mga, you know, mga block. But it's just a couple of few pieces that you're paying a heavy premium just to import it from other countries. Pala, if you really break it down, it's really something that you can buy in your local electrical shop. Hindi lang sinasabi sa inyo because they want you to think that it's super complex to do. So. We envision a, a time where, you know, beyond just, uh, you know, basket weave, uh, we ho really hope that one day uh, that solar will be uh, something that is a, a regular business in, in the provinces. Because we have 20 million Filipinos in the Philippines, and the last thing you want to do is somebody to say, oh, I'm your salvation. No, you really have to give the technology away for it to be really possible. Uh, am I, is that, am I? I just one more. So we build also street lights because uh, we can reduce crime by 70%. Uh, the liter of light grew from the Philippines. We're now in 30 countries around the world. Uh, we're hitting about 1 million houses uh, around the world. And as I said, you know, we're a small NGO from the Philippines, but open source and technologies that can be replicated uh, gives such a powerful new meaning to changing the world. So this is technology that we find parts even in other countries, and then once we transform, uh, once we once we are able to teach them how to do it, they can keep on scaling up. So we also want the provinces to be able to do such a thing. Uh, outside, uh, you know, we have a van which we we are going to several places around, and basically we're we're trying to teach communities how to make it. Of course, we want the van to be also sustainable. So we're here in all of these countries around the world because we're open source and at the same time the technology can be replicated and so just with ding dong dantes uh we can also teach you house lights with with mobile charging systems street lights and uh in 2018 we're already testing it you add only 30 dollars and you we can put a, a a small hot spot on your street light because there's power and you can down you if you, you have a USB you can download information for the community. So basically you can have a, like an e-library there with, with with books that you can download from your uh, cell phone. So we really want to move it from light to enlightenment. But really the point is uh, we don't see why you have to spend 70% of your uh, money for sustainable energy for logistics. Because when you buy something from ab from from abroad. By the time it comes here, uh, you've spent really a, a big amount of money. And something so simple as light or street lights or mobile chargers, you can actually build them yourself. So we hope that that will be the future. Anyway, thank you.